Lesson three, the contemporary history of analytics. Analytics really came of age over a 20 year period, marked by highs, lows, and innovations in the digital space. Five important things that we will discuss in this lesson. One is that the contemporary history of data analytics saw the fully formed ideal of the role data and, anal and analysis could play in marketing and advertising. Contemporary history of data analytics is a 20-year period. It begins with the introduction of the banner ad in 1994 and goes all the way through to 2014. Contemporary history of data analytics is just, uh, can be described as four different epochs, each boasting significant events that trace the growth of this science. As with the early history of data analytics, these epics of its contemporary history feature inflection points that advance the practice and a signal the move into a new epic. And then finally, several events demonstrate the maturation of digital platforms in 2014. That's why I think that is such an important year. Uh, this really does bring contemporary, uh, contemporary analytics uh, history to a close as we sort of pivot into modern data analytics. When I think of the contemporary history of data analytics, I'm reminded of a quote from Michael Fosnott, the former president of FCB, a global advertising agency uh, headquartered in Chicago. Michael says, over the next few years, geeks in marketing will become one of the most disruptive forces in a discipline that was traditionally driven by big creative personalities. Michael said this in 2006. He's referencing geeks like me, geeks like himself, who will bring quantification and data insight to marketing and advertising, which up until this point had frankly uh, been a practice and industry run by creative personalities who would just kind of think up thoughts, right? And, and the most creative thought was what won the day. Michael was foreseeing a time that data could bring accountability, bring insight, bring these things that we now know are so important he was probably a little too uh, ahead of his time. He's talking in 2006, just a few years after Facebook launched. It certainly took some more time before we see a full maturation of digital. We can trace that experience of digital in this contemporary history, which really begins in 1994 when the first banner ad is placed and goes all the way through to 2014 when we do see sort of the, the maturation of digital platform. Let's look at those four epics. The first epic is what I call when anything was possible. This, this happened from 1994 to 1999. It began again with the first banner ad, but other important things happened in this period. Uh, Google was founded. Uh, Napster was invented. Um, other really important early internet um, platforms like pets.com, cosmo.com, flus.com, others were all founded. This was a really exciting time to be in digital. Everyone wanted to have a digital and e-commerce component to their business. We didn't know exactly what that meant or how that would play out, but it, everyone knew that there was great value there. And so there's a tremendous amount of investment flowing into this space. And frankly, some business ideas that probably weren't as sturdy as they needed to be would still receive millions of dollars of investment from people hoping to just find that idea that would trigger a sea change. That all ended in the second epic. Um, these two important, terrible years of 2000 to 2002. This was when the NASDAQ bubble finally did burst. And within a very short period of time, the NASDAQ index, where all of these dot-com stocks were trading, fell by a tremendous amount. We lost 2.6 trillion, with a T, dollars of value, nearly overnight. Uh, this happened so, so rapidly. Um, at the time, in fact, there were only two other countries, two countries in the world, whose uh, gross domestic product equaled that uh, that loss. It was Japan and the United States, uh, meaning any other country on earth could spend a year creating goods and products and services, selling all of those, and still the value they accumulated wouldn't be enough to plug this hole. It was a tremendous, tremendous loss. Many companies went out of business in this period of time. But from here, 
kind of arising from the ashes is the next period that I call the seeds of prosperity. And some really important things happen in the, the seven years following that bubble. Uh, LinkedIn is founded, Facebook launches, Twitter launches, um, Groupon is founded. All these companies are coming onto the scene and all of them importantly are not selling products in a traditional sense. They're connecting people through the internet. They are using uh, the, the data they are collecting to create value. And this is a tremendously important development as we look to the future of e-commerce and analytics. The final epic is what I'd call the age of unicorns. This is from 2011 to 2014. When this epic begins, it's really a, a, a rather rare thing to be a company who would classify as what we call a unicorn, a $1 billion or more market valuation as a private company. By the end, this number has grown dramatically. As again, these companies that have understood really the value of the internet and the value of data being co collected or uh, created in a digital form and use that to create tremendous stores of value in their companies. That year, 2014, is an important one. We see really the demonstration of digital becoming fully mature. And it's best illustrated, I think, through four experiences in that year. The first was Ellen's Oscar selfie, if you remember. This set all sorts of records. Um, it was the, in, the original event that broke the internet. Um, Oscar, um, Ellen hosting the Oscars that year, walked out into the crowd and took a selfie, which was still, if you can believe, a, a pretty new thing at that time, and then quickly tweeted that out, which then got retweeted a, 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 a record number of times. It's since been surpassed for sure, but at the time this had tremendous impact. The next was the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, where through the connective power of Facebook and other social media platforms, over $100 million were raised, really demonstrating the connective power of the Internet and the way that it can be used for social good. The Ferguson event in Ferguson, Missouri, and how Twitter was used to connect people to get, uh, to get messages out um, is another tremendously important event of that time and demonstrates how social can be used, again, for connection, but in a different kind of way. And then finally, the Hollerback video, which was 10 hours of a woman walking in New York City, um, kind of a first-person video that shows the sort of harassment that this woman faced, uh, um, really representative of any typical woman, brought awareness to that, uh, that issue. And for the first time, uh, we see in this event digital being used to do just that. That is a contemporary history of analytics. Another kind of interesting thing, if we look at this period of time, um, from the, the midpoint, like right around when, uh, when Facebook is launching to the end of that period, those 10 years, 2004 to 2014, if we look at uh, a Google Trends line, for the term marketing analytics. What Google Trends does is, is, is present the search interest in a term. We use this to, to indicate consumer intent or interest in something. And so you see a, an interesting kind of trend where the, the interest begins to rise and rise and then sort of tapers off and falls off. A lot of the kind of jumps and leaps in that line are created by various news events, um, particularly uh, uh, companies investing or merging in this space. But one way you could interpret this is that people are just becoming more aware of analytics and it's losing interest. Uh, but what I think a more sound and accurate interpretation of that is that the idea of marketing analytics took on a number of different terms, a number of different names. You have data analytics, you have big data, um, you, have, you have just plain analytics uh, as, as there didn't need to be a distinction any longer that this was marketing analytics opposed to something else. And so I think if you took the accumulation of all those terms, you would see the interest in analytics continue to rise. And it continues to rise today. And it will continue to rise 
into the, the modern, modern era of analytics, which is what we will discuss in the next lecture.